Hi trainer. Goedemiddag. Ik, ik zie dat je een beetje aan het lachen bent. Je hebt er wel zin in. Altijd. 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 Altijd moet het positief zijn. Hè? Jullie ook, hè? Ja, we hebben het leven. Hè? Dan gaat het leven veel beter, jongens. Wat heb je nodig eigenlijk? Uh, heb je iets nodig om inderdaad een soort drempel over te gaan? Heb je een gelukje nodig? En dat het dan gaat lopen? Of is er meer aan de hand? Uh, een, een ploeg heeft soms een push nodig, toch? Ben je mee eens? Nou, of course. Ik denk dat ik de vraag ook op de persconferentie had. If we need luck, and I, I think I answered in, in general, I don't believe in luck. You know, I, I think you, you need to earn your right to get these small margins on your side. And um, yeah, I've seen it. These games we played already this season uh, in the Eredivisie. We haven't got the points that we wanted. Also in some of the games, I don't think we, we got the points that we deserved. But at the end of the day, it's football. Mm -hmm. uh, when you don't close your own chances, if you don't score the goals, then you give the opportunity to the opponents to, to hurt you. Um, and that's our job, to, uh, to make sure that the opponents, they don't get a chance to run away with a draw or, or whatever. Um, so you have to search your luck. That's what yeah, you, it, you, can, you can probably, I would probably more agree on this, search your luck in, yeah. in that aspect, but or at least search to get these small margins on your side. And that's also a little bit what I think you're trying to ask uh, Thomas, well, what do we need at the yeah. moment? And, it, and it, it's small things. They need to talk to each other, these players, they need to discuss. Football, they need to understand each other a little bit better because I see them working hard on the on the training pitch. They're, they're working hard in the video. They're trying to be concrete against each other and, and discuss things. And you have this, it's, it's necessary. But at the end, it comes out on the pitch and it's it's small meters where they have to correct each other or adjust each other. And it's uh, it, it's the name of the game. It's, it's, it, it's that kind of hard work that I'm talking about, small details in the game. It's not about working from uh, six to six in the evening, but looking concrete on, on things during the games. How can we improve the build-up phase? How can we improve the breakthrough phase? How can we improve uh, transitions? How can we improve defending better, for example, not giving away chances? For me, that's hard work, and that starts inside at the, at the coach's office, looking at games, analyzing, looking at data, different things that can maybe flip that small margin on your side. Waking up at six o'clock. I've, I've read you wake up very, very early yeah, every morning. Yeah, but uh, I don't think I'm unusual like other people. A lot of people wake up at six. That's so true. I think that's that's pretty normal. That's uh, true. Uh, let me ask you one thing about the coach of Girona, Michel. He, he, he watched the game against Leverkusen. And he said that Feyenoord was not so bad, but that Leverkusen was, coach, ver huh? was very effective. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with that? <laughs> Leverkusen was very effective, and maybe you're jealous about it. Normally, I, I don't like to agree with you, but no. I, I think I told you also after the game. I think it, it sounds was not so bad as. Nah, it, it sounds crazy when you look at the result 4-0, and don't misunderstand me. None of us are happy losing. None of us are happy losing 4-0. But it's our job, as I said a lot of times. You, you, we need to look at the games, not just the result. And there was a lot of good things from box to box. I think we played a very good game. Actually, the game plan that we prepared, I think the boys did absolutely amazing in that aspect. But key elements, key moments of the game, we got punished. We got punished. And that is sometimes happens when you're up against big opponents. Are we happy with it? No, absolutely not. But it's the facts. I think there was good moments in the game. And that's also why I'm confident when I watch the NEC game, when I, when I prepare the game for tomorrow, we have good football players, mm. good quality. I see them in training. It's, it's good quality but we need to get it out consistently 90 minutes, not just 30 or 45 or 60 minutes. It's our job to, uh, to get it out fully. Dennis, Rijmer. Yes. Uh, Brio, goedemiddag. Die, uh, die omschakeling hè, tegen Leverkusen, is dat um, nou echt de kwaliteit van Leverkusen? Of verwacht jij in de Champions League op Europees niveau dat dan die eventuele kwetsbaarheden bij jullie juist sneller aan het licht komen ook? Ik denk dat het een combinatie is. Uh, I think a couple of times we saw the, the, the qualities of, uh, of Vietz just punishing, punishing with a, a couple of good attempts. Um, a few of the transitions, that's also what I talked about after the game. I think it was the mindset was not completely for the urgency of defending your goal. Uh, I think we should have done better in a couple of these, uh, these transition moments. Uh, but at the end of the day, yes, I think there's a, a big difference. should be a big difference also from uh, the championship of Germany. Uh, Leverkusen en dan to teams, for example, in, uh, in RDVC. Je speelt nu tegen een tegenstander die uh, misschien net als jullie nog geen ingespeeld geheel is, natuurlijk best veel veranderingen. 
verwacht je daar dat er meer kansen voor jullie ook liggen op voorhand dan in die vorige wedstrijd? I don't expect anything, uh, to be honest. I, um, in, in the sense of if we're going to get more chances or whatever, I'm, I'm trying to create a game plan for the players that will give us the opportunities to create moments against them, will create a danger, hopefully create goals. Uh, we analyze them, of course. We, we've seen a lot of their games from last year, also from this season. Uh, you said it yourself, they, they lost uh, quite a lot of players, key players, or sold them. And now they're trying to adjust their team as well, and coach is trying to get his philosophy into to the new players and struggling. Uh, I think they're mid-table uh, in, in, in La Liga. Haven't also, like us, picked up the points that they maybe expect or other uh, people expect from them. Um, and that could maybe be one of the, the moments for us where we can also hurt them in, in finding gaps and cracks in their organization offensively and, and defensively. Is uh, een van jouw ja, misschien wel lastigste taken die je nu hebt om, om iedereen ja, positief uh, te houden, ook, ook binnen de spelersgroep? Of gaat dat nog betrekkelijk gemakkelijk? Jij staat natuurlijk dag in dag uit met ze op het veld bij de kleedkamer. Um. I, I, I don't think that much if, if it's a big job or whatever. It's, it's my job as a coach in any situation to, um, to try to get the best out of the players. And obviously when you don't win the games that you want and, and expectations are massive when you're uh, around final and, and sometimes the, the expectations are maybe uh, too much in, in some aspects, then it's my job to try to help the players best way possible. Sometimes it's encouragement, sometimes it's positive. Sometimes it's uh, bigger demands, um, sometimes it's a string, like your colleague says. It's different tools you need to grab into. Uh, I think it's always important to, to be yourself and try to do the best for these guys and, and players like Thomas. Uh, be honest. I think the honesty is the best weapon we all have, uh, and that is to tell them what's going on, and, and that's what I'm trying to do. Als je zegt verwachtingen too much, bedoel je dan dat je goed begrijpt, bedoel je dan Onrealistische verwachtingen? No, I, I don't talk about it unrealistic or whatever, but I'm just talking about expectations are high. And you need to uh, manage it. And then I, I, in general, I don't care if they're too high or too little. It's, it's part of the game. It's my job not to focus on the expectations. Because then uh, I think we all get that feeling inside your body. This, this, is, this is tough. Uh, so don't focus on the, the expectations. Because we know when you're at final and you sign the contract, you know what the ambitions are. And that's why I'm here, that's why Thomas is here, that's why we have the whole locker room full of uh, fantastic football players who want to achieve something. Um, and then it is the mental game in football and in sports to try to uh, not to focus on all the expectations and all the voices outside uh, our dressing room that can have an influence on our mindset and our, our um, brain in, in general. And, uh, and I think that is the challenge. And, and that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm focusing, controlling the things that I can control in the dressing room, uh, in the club, uh, with Dennis, with the uh, management, whatever. That's, that's what I focus on. And then I leave you guys, I said it a lot of times, I leave you guys doing your job. That's why you get paid. And that's also why you have a boss who uh, will sometimes push you on some questions for, for me and us. It's part of the game, guys. Uh, and yeah, I like it. That's why I'm here. Sinclair, ESPN. Zelfvertrouwen is een woord wat we de laatste dagen en weken heel veel hebben gehoord. Uh, <laughs> Confidence, ja. Yeah. Zelfvertrouwen. Yeah. Uh, wat doe jij deze dagen om ervoor te zorgen uh, dat de spelers dat hebben? Want we zien bijvoorbeeld ook in Nijmegen dat na zo'n tegengoal dat daar gelijk wat, wat met, met yeah. de spelers gebeurt. Nou, again, I start with the honesty. Uh, tell them what I see. Uh, tell them what I feel. Um, and uh, use data as well to show them uh, how the game is going as well from an objective perspective. And we try to keep the emotions away. Because it's, it's obvious, the minute you walk through 1908 uh, Sunday morning, you feel and you sense uh, disappointment. Uh, of course, it's, it's normal. You didn't win a game that everybody expected us to win. or it, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like this in football. You need to earn the right to get points. And, uh, and that is my job. So, I, I, as I said, honesty, explain them what I see, what I feel. Uh, show them the things we need to do better. Show them obviously the things that I think we did really well, and then try to be constructive uh, from any seat. There's two things I wanted them to uh, to do better from an offensive perspective. Show them, and then we go train. Hier achter mij zit uh, mijn gewaardeerde collega van de VI, Martijn Krabberdam. Die heeft vandaag een heel mooi verhaal gemaakt met jou. Uh, maar daarin wat er opvalt in dat verhaal is dat je zegt dat je met terugwerkende kracht toch wel spijt hebt dat je geswitst bent van het systeem of dat je begonnen bent met een ander systeem. Kun je dat toelichten? 
Um, yeah, as, as I said, when, when I arrived, I, I definitely had the ambition to, um, to try to work with the, with the 343. I think it could be a good weapon for us. Uh, I knew, of course, a lot of teams in the air division not playing with a back three. Um, so it could help us to be flexible, not the same uh, system. Uh, I also saw the, the previous year, uh, especially from an offensive pr uh, perspective, it was more or less the same positions uh, that the players were taking on the pitch, so it wasn't that big a difference. Um, then I also had some expectations some players would leave us and uh, would be easier to replace in, uh, within that formation. And at the end of the day, I, I felt that um, with the players we had available, there was uh, more um, security in the team to continue with the back four uh, and to play 4-3-3 three, three and, and then have the different opportunities within that formation to play the football that I, that I like as well. Maar kan je het ook iets omdraaien, want jullie hebben zes weken aan zo'n systeem gewerkt. Uh, daarin winnen jullie de kruifschouw en spelen een wedstrijd tegen Willem II die je normaal gesproken wint. Daarna gooi je het overboord en eigenlijk is het niet veel beter gegaan. Ja, yeah, we, we didn't throw it overboard, because uh, we used it for example 45 minutes against uh, Leverkusen. So there's nothing that is just disappearing and, and going away, but it gives flexibility in the, in the squad and that's also what I said to the players. I think this is uh, a good tool for us to have the uh, ability to, to change throughout the games, maybe start the games in a different formation as well, but the philosophy has to, to stay the same. Uh, Possession-based football, uh, dynamic football for sure, intensity in the, in the games as well. Um, then it's just a little bit regarding the positions, uh, which uh, can be different. But I think if you, if you watch the game um, against, uh, against NEC, there's a lot of same positions, uh, one wide player and, and stuff like this. Eén dingetje nog, de verwachting was dat Nieuwkoper misschien bij zou zijn. Is er niet bij? Terugslag? Vraagteken. Uh, I, I don't really think so. It's just taken a little bit longer than we, um, than we expected, unfortunately. He, he was on the pitch actually Friday, uh, but didn't feel 100%. And then we decided to slow down a little bit. And um, it's still, it's not, uh, it's not perfect. And we don't want to gamble uh, at this time. We got one week, and uh, not one week, sorry. We got one... Um, one more game after this one uh, tomorrow before the international break. So um, let's see if we can have him fit for uh, for Twente. Otherwise, we we got two more weeks um, to prepare him. Thank you, Mikos. Ja, trainer, je sprak over de expectations, hè, de, de verwachtingen. Uh, toen de Champions League loting er was, kwamen alle boekmakers geloof ik met uh, Feyenoord heeft het zwaarst gelood van allemaal. Is het intern dan ook geen, geen item dat jullie per se uh, door moeten? Of is daar überhaupt iets over, uh, over afgesproken? Of no, iets? no, actually, we haven't discussed it in, in that aspect, no. Nee? No, it's a draw. We, we got a really game, nice game coming up. Um, and um, yeah, we didn't discuss anything in, in that uh, element, no. En wat wil je nou vooral zien, het resultaat? Of wil je juist zien dat je dat half uur wat je tegen NEC had... Uh, gedeeltes tegen Leverkusen, dat je dat kan uitbouwen, dat je daarin verder bent en dat een beetje los van het resultaat zien. We always go for the result, whether it's, it's RDVC or, or Champions League, then we always go for the result. Maar stel, je haalt een resultaat, maar het is voor de poorten van de hel zonder dat je er zelf aan, aan voetballen toekomt. Ja, yeah, but at the end of the day, we, we're here to compete, uh, whether we're in a phase where, where things are going against us and, and, and we're not performing that we want or how we want, then we still need to win games. And that's, that's also the expectations and the pressure that I'm talking about, that we, we cannot remove it from a, from a club like Feyenoord. You have to embrace it and, and not think about that pressure and, and those expectations, because they will not help you in, in the phase we're in. Uh, you can look at my colleague from, from Girona. Uh, he's in some of the same uh, situations with, uh, I think it's almost uh, 10 new players he, he got in this, this season. And you cannot just plug and play 10, 10 boys. It's, it's, uh, it's impossible. But you can try and work with it. You can work with the ones that were here last year. Um, you can you can build in that in that process. But at the same time, you need to win, and that is uh, a balance that is it's not easy, but uh, it's it's a challenge. And and that's why I said, when you play Champions League games, you're here to compete. You're here to win. We know it at Feyenoord, and again, it's one of these things that we embrace as uh, as people in sport. En als je zegt, met spelers moeten niet denken aan de expectations, heb je daar iets voor? Of focus je dan op, het, op de manier van spelen, waardoor het uiteindelijk vanzelf wel komt? Ja, yeah. oh, exactly. Focusing on the game. Focusing on uh, tactical elements. Um, focusing on the environment. Focusing on things that we can uh, change. Focusing on things we can develop. I, can't, I cannot develop or, or change the expectations. They will always be there. And they need to be there. We, we have a, we're a big club. 
with a lot of um, supporters who who love this club more than uh, than everything uh, almost. So so they will always be there, and that's important for us. But we need to to look at the things that we can control, and I think that's the the most important thing in football: focusing on on the training, the environment, how we behave uh, towards each other, how we are professional. All these things, that's, that's some of the hard work that I'm talking about. It's not just working hard and getting up uh, early and go home late. It's not hard work for me. It's, it's a part of it. But the most important is to be concrete in the trainings. How do we want to train? How can we maybe twist this uh, tactical detail to get more out of Baylor or somebody else? That's the, the hard work that I'm talking about. And, and I don't think you do that if you just work uh, four hours a day. That's, that's just my philosophy. Okay. Thank you. We will do a total of three more questions from Spanish media. Start with, yes, yes. Hola. Castellano, español. Buenas tardes, Sebastián Murcia para la Popular Sport. Yo quería consultarle por el uruguayo Facundo González. Debutó con ustedes hace ocho días y él ya ha tenido un llamamiento a la absoluta por el profe Bielsa. Usted que lo tiene a él en el día a día, ¿cuál ve que sean los puntos fuertes del uruguayo y cómo cree usted que lo puede ayudar a su plantilla? Muchas gracias. Yeah, Faku uh, is is a player who came in quite late in the in the window. He's uh, definitely one of the players that we um, that we see a big potential in. He uh, he had a good season last year in in the Serie B. Uh, he's physical. He's fast. He's quite strong in the duels. He has a good uh, left foot uh, and actually a really good mindset as well. So he, he's taking good steps uh, within the, within the team. Uh, played some some a few minutes for us at, at home against uh, NAC, I think it was. Um, so he is for sure one of the players that we expect will help us over the coming months and uh, and coming period. Yes, senor. For uh, Catalan Television, um, obviously you know perfectly Ladislav Krejci from Sparta Prague, but uh, you work for Midgillan two years, and in that team, there was a certain Artem Dopic last season playing for yeah. Girona. So knowing uh, the way Artem Dopic plays, knowing the way Girona attacked last season and how they are attacking this season, do you think it's the play Artem Dopic that Girona is missing the most this season in, in their attacking play? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah, in, in some aspects, there's, a, there's an easy answer to, to it because he scored a lot of goals last year. <laughs> a lot of goals which were important for them and they were competing for the championship for a long time. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm really happy for Atem. He's, he's not just a good football player, but he was also an amazing boy. Uh, really professional, always working hard, even though he didn't always play at Michelin. Uh, amazing boy. And uh, yeah, I wish him just all the best in, uh, in, uh, in Roma also now. He, he deserves it because he worked really, really hard for it. Um, but he's definitely one of the players that I think they, they are missing. Obviously, you, you, you cannot just replace 20-plus uh, goals. It's, it, it's difficult. Um, and also, the, um, his, his game style, his playing style, is, is also really, really important for them. Dynamic, aggressive, uh, deep runs, uh, good in the box as well. So I think he's one of the key players that they're missing, yes. yes Hello, here in the bottom. Hi, welcome to Catalonia, Mr. Um, I have a question about uh, the game tomorrow. What kind of game do you expect tomorrow? Uh, something passionate, something uh, box to box, or some control? What kind of game do you expect um, uh, tomorrow? And when was the first time, the very first time you heard about Girona? Uh, I don't know if, because last year Girona was impressing everyone, not only in La Liga, but also in Europe. So when was the first time you heard about Girona? Uh, I think we always heard about Girona in, in some some moments, but but I think last year was was uh, incredible what they what they did. Um, big respect to them, and they were competing so long for the championship uh, here in Spain. Um, so so we know the qualities of of uh, Girona, and as we already talked about, they they lost some key players uh, this season and and are trying to find their feet. They're trying to find back to to the foundation of the uh, of the team and of the club. Uh, that's not so easy. Um, so I expect uh, a game. Um, it's going to be. It's, I think it's going to be a 50-50 game. Um, both teams want to uh, to keep the ball. Both of the teams want possession. Um, obviously, uh, Girona has some some 
tactical elements in the in the style of play that can make it difficult for us. They're rotating a lot with the with the left uh, fullback, for example. Um, they got some good structure in the in the build up uh, phase as well. But um, I'm hoping and expecting also that we can come down here and try to dominate, try to play our style of football, uh, make it a, a physical game in in some. Uh, some elements of uh, of the game as uh, as well, and then uh, are already talked about it. I have confidence in our boys. We have a good team. We have good players, but we need to get it out at the same time uh, tomorrow. Then I think we can all expect um, a really nice football game.